heaven. We want to right now move. I said we want to right now move. Somebody start to clap your hands real fast. It said we want to right now. We want to right now. We want to right now move. We want to. We don't want to right now move. We want to move by your power. Move by your spirit. Move by your anointing. Move by your mighty power. We want to right now move. We want to right now move. I said we want to right now move. We want to right now move. Not tomorrow. Hey. Not later. Hey. Not next week. Not next month. But we want to right now move. I said we want to right now move. We want to right now move. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. Hey. Move. By your anointing, move. I said we want you to move. Move right now. Move on every row. Move in every life. Move on every seat. Move into every mind. Move into every heart. Move into every life. Move into every family. Move. Move. I said move, I said move, move, we want you to move, you want to just walk the hours, get out your seat, and tell the Lord to move, 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 just move, move, we want you to move, we want you to move, hey, we want you to move, we don't wait, we won't wait, we won't wait, we don't want to wait, but we want to right now move. I said we want to right now move. We don't want nothing usual. We want an unusual move. We want, we don't want the same thing. We don't want to go off of yesterday's manner, last week's manner, but we want another move. We want another move, hey. We want another, we want another move. Shade, mandele basa koho siande. We want another move. So move, 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 move. I said move, move, move right now. I said move right now until you. Move right now until we'll change. Move right now until our minds were moved. Move right now until we walk different. Move right now until we talk different. Move right now until our lives are changed. Move right now until we change our posture. Move right now until we say no to those dirty things. Move right now until we say yes to your will. Yes to your way. 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 Yes. Ooh, yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. We say yes to you. Yes. Clap your hands right here and say yes. I said clap your hands and say yes. I feel another level of anointing. I feel a yoke destroying power that's about to hit this place like never before. 
you will not leave here the same way you came. You won't leave here the same way you came. You won't leave here the same way you woke up. You won't leave here. And what you experienced this week, you won't leave here wrestling with that spirit. You won't leave here. I feel a newness. I feel a newness. It's coming upon you right now. Hey, I feel a newness coming upon you, upon your shoulders. Hey, I feel a newness coming upon your heart. Whatever was broken, it's now being mended. Receive it right now. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming upon you even now. It's coming. It's coming upon you. All you got to do is lift your hands and receive it. Receive it. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself. But you got to open up your mouth. Lift your hands. Open your spirit. Open your heart and receive it for yourself. You got to want it for yourself. You got to want it for yourself. One more time, clap your hands and shout yes! I need you to get out your seat real quick. Go shake somebody's hand you didn't come with and tell them we gonna say yes today. We gonna say, we're gonna say yes. We're gonna say yes. We're gonna say yes. And I touch and agree with your yes. I'll touch and agree with your yes. I'll touch and agree with your yes. When our yes connects. I'll touch and agree with your yes. I'll touch and agree with your next level. I'll touch and agree. When two or three. Come on, I said get out your seat and go to somebody else. You want to shake three people's hand. You want to shake three people's hand. If you're scared, just fist bump them. Whatever you gotta do, but let them somebody and tell them, well, I agree. I agree. I agree with you, yes. I agree. Ooh. I agree with you, yes. Oh no. Ooh. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree with you, yes. I agree. Matter of fact, the spirit of the Lord agrees with your yes. For the promises of God, they are yes, yes, and amen. Clap your hands right here. I feel the power. I said, I feel the power. I said, I feel the power. I feel the anointing. I feel the glory in this resting in this house. Come on, you ought to just tap into it. Just tap into it. If we don't sing a song, if we don't shout, if we don't hear a word, all we want is his glory, the power to rest. Receive it right now. Receive it. I'm going to give you a few more moments to just tap in. I'm going to give you a few moments to tap in. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay it at the altar. Some of y'all need to come to the altar and just lay it down. Get it off of you. Whatever it is, whatever it is, yield to the Spirit. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Say yes. My soul said yes. My soul said yes. My soul said yes. Yeah. Somebody say yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm not waiting for everybody, but I just need two or three that don't mind jumping on your feet and tapping to this glory. My soul said yes. Ooh, yes. Yeah. 
Somebody say, yes, Lord. This moment is not for everybody, but I wish everybody would just jump on this one. My soul says yes. 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 Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul said yes. Yes. Yes, yes, Lord. Clap your hands real fast and say yes. I said clap your hands fast and say yes. Because that's the quickest way that you're going to see your miracle. Clap your hands fast. How fast, how bad do you want it? Clap your hands real fast and say yes. There's an unusual anointing in ECC on 19 Mon Street. And I would if you just jump on your feet. I mean, everybody, everybody, everybody. It's better when we do it together. I said it's better when we, it's better when we do it together. It's better. I don't need you to fake this one. I don't need you to act phony. I don't need you to act like it. You got a chip on your shoulder. I need you to give God praise because breakthrough. I feel breakthrough that needs to happen right here. Breakthrough is happening. I said breakthrough is happening. I said breakthrough needs to happen. I said breakthrough needs to happen. I said breakthrough. Breakthrough in your praise. Breakthrough in your worship. Breakthrough. Come on. One, two. Everybody clap your hands. Don't act cute with it. I said don't act cute with it. Don't act cute with it. Let your breakthrough come in. Come on. Let your breakthrough come in. I said let your breakthrough. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands. I feel breakthrough happening. I said I feel breakthrough happening. I said I feel breakthrough happening. Whatever was is now under your feet. Whatever was under your feet. Whatever was under your back is now under your feet. Whatever was on your back. It's not one of your feet. Let's go. One, two, and everybody shout. Everybody shout. It's on your feet. It's on your feet. Whatever was on your back, I declare now. It's under your feet. 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 You are the receiving right now. Put your feet on the floor. It's under your feet. It's under your feet. Dylan, it's under your feet. I said it's under your feet. It's under your feet. It's under your feet. I need right here. Come on. Everybody leap. Everybody leap. Watch up. If you got heels, just bring your knees. Come on, like this. Come on. Hey. Right here, everybody clap your hands. Let me hear your hands right here. Clap them like you got the Holy Ghost. 
Lock the devil's hands between them. Come, come. Everybody clap your hands. He's been good. I said he's been good. He's been good. Everybody clap your hands. Right now, come on, everybody clap your hands if you love Jesus. I said clap him if you love Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us, I said let us exalt his name, his holy name, his, his matchless name, his powerful name, the name that has all power, the name that has all authority, the name that has all strength, it is to the name of Jesus, of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands real quick and say, Jesus. Hallelujah, clap your hands right now one more time and shout the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh come on, put your hands together. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and put your hands together. Now open your mouth and give God some praise. Open your mouth and give God some praise. You don't need the music to give God some praise. So open your mouth and give God some praise. Come on and give him some praise. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. How many know the Lord is good? He is good. He is great. He is mighty. Amen. Glory to your name, oh God. Our scripture is Jeremiah 30, 8 through 9. Amen. In that day declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and I will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up for them. Amen. Amen. Glory to your name. Our daily confession reads, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. My members, the parts of my body, are instruments of righteousness, yielded to God for his services and his glory. The devil has no place in me, no power over me, and no unsettled claims against me. All has been settled by the blood of Jesus. I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony. I love not my life unto the death. My body is for the Lord and the Lord is for my body. Amen. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Oh, come on and give him some praise. If you know that you're free on today, give him some praise. If you know that he's brought you a mighty long way, give him some praise. If you know that he's great and mighty, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Father God, we give you glory. Father God, we give you all the honor. We lift up our voices unto you, oh God, and we say, have thine own way. This is your day and this is your time. Move freely. Move as you see fit, oh God. We will not stand in your way, oh God, for what you have in store. But Lord God, we step into your flow. We open up our hearts and we open up our mouths unto you, oh God. We lift up our hands and surrendering all unto you because we serve a God that is great, a God that is mighty, a God that is powerful, all-knowing. And we surrender all unto you on this very day. Have thine own way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And we declare that you are great. We declare that you are mighty. And we accept all that you have for us on today. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody came to bless the Lord today? Says anybody came to bless the Lord today? Come on, you ought to clap your hands all over the sanctuary and give God, God some praise. Come on, I need you to stand to your feet, everybody. Come on, if you came to bless the Lord. Come on, everybody, clap your hands right here. We came to give our God some praise together. Come on, everybody, let's go. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap, 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 clap your hands. Come on, you ought to clap your hands right here. Put 
a smile on your face, everybody. Everybody clap your hands. We give you praise, oh yeah. If you came to give him glory, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let's do it together, y'all know the song. It's real simple, say, I will. Everybody lift it up, say, come on, come on, come on, let's bless him, come on, let's pray, come on, let me hear y'all sing that, come on, come on, let's bless him, let's praise this, come on, come on, come on, everybody lift it up, say, yeah, yeah, right here, come on, say, Everybody lift it up and say now. Come on. Say. Let me see y'all clap. Everybody lift it up. Come on. Come on. Y'all look so good. Come on. I see you, Ryan. Come on. Everybody clap your head. Come on. Let's praise him there. One more time right here. Time for y'all. Come on, everybody, let's sit up there. Let's go! One, two, three, hot! Lord, 
Y'all sound so good. Everybody that did up, we forever in the let's go. Everybody praise him forever. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Cause that's how long you are worthy. That's how long you are worthy. That's how long you are worthy. We praise your name forever and ever. We praise. One more time, we say forever and ever, forever and ever. We praise. Now somebody give him a forever praise. I'll praise you in the morning. I'll praise you in the noonday. I'll praise you in the evening. Even in the midnight hour, when things are tough, when the going gets rough, when the hills are too hard to climb, we praise your name forever and ever. We pray. We praise your name forever and ever. We pray. Somebody lift your hands right there. And let's worship our King. Let's worship our Lord. Let's worship our Father. Come on, somebody lift your hands. Let's worship. Let's worship our King. We feel your presence here even right now. give you glory. We give you honor. There is none like you. There is none like you. So we'll give it to you. We'll give you our worship. Come on, somebody just offer for worship even right now in your own way. Come on, say something to the Father. Come on, say something to him. He deserves deserves the glory he deserves it even right now oh God it's only you that we are breathing it was only you that we are standing here today and we'll give you the glory <laughs> we'll crown you with our praise we'll crown you with our worship we'll give it everything we lay it at your feet even right it's your breath in our lungs it's it's your breath in our lungs and we pour it out we pour it come on somebody just open up your mouths don't wait for me don't wait for a song i just need you to open up your mouths and let's worship the king come on let's worship him let's worship him in spirit and in truth come on let's worship him not out of our own minds but let's worship him out of our spirits even right now let's worship him we worship you again your worship lift your hands right here
let's go there. Come on. We came to ground. See, Lord. Come on. Say, ground. Now take this moment right here and let's worship the King of Kings. Come on, let's worship the Lord of Lords. Let's give him the glory. Let's worship him. Let's honor him. We bow before you. We bow before you. We bow before you. We want to be like the angels and cry holy, holy, holy. We want to be like the elders and cast our crowns. We want to be like the beast with many eyes and faces. We want to see that glass crystal. See of the saints. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you glory. Come on, somebody lift your hands right here. See, crown. Lord. Say crown.
come on, lift your hands for just a few moments. And let's just begin to open our mouths and worship him for who he is. He is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. He is our Alpha and our Omega. He is our beginning and he is our ending. There's nobody like him. Nobody like him nowhere. And we crown him with majesty. We crown him with wisdom. We crown him with glory. And we worship him and adore him. We worship and we adore him. We worship and adore him. We worship and adore him. Would you clap your hands? And thank God for his presence that is here. We certainly think and we praise God because this is indeed the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in him. Just look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I don't know about you, but I've come to give God praise. Come on, clap your hands and act like you came to do it. Hallelujah. While you're standing, while you're standing, we honor God for his presence, the absence of our overseer, the Pastor Stacy, the Pastor Kentrell, to our First Lady Sherry, and to all of our ministers and our children, and even those who you don't see, just tell somebody it's a blessing to be back in the house of God. Come on, tell them again. It's a blessing to be back in the house of God because somebody didn't make it because they didn't have the mind and the will to be here. But tell somebody, say, but I made up in my mind that I was going to press my way to the house of God. And I heard the old folks would say, like this minister told you, that there's a blessing in the press. There is a blessing in the press. Will you, amen, I don't have a lot of time today. Will you go with me very quickly, amen, to the scripture, Job, found in Job chapter 23. Thank you, praise team. Thank you to our musicians. Job. Make sure I have it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Job, the 23rd chapter. We will begin reading at the 8th verse and conclude at the 10th verse. When you have a shout, I have the word. If you don't have it, look on at the screens or somebody's device or Bible. And it says, Behold, I go forward. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him on the left hand where he doth work, but I can't behold him because he hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I should take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I want to read that latter clause one more time. And it says, but he knoweth the way that I should take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I want to preach if you would give me about 10 to 15 minutes from the subject when I come out this time. Before you take your seat, it's all right, Sister Keisha, you already sit, so you ain't got to sit down, stand back up, but just tell somebody on another side, say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, when I come out this time.
please take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I'll preach if you help me preach. Have you ever had an unexplained event happen in your life that many times when we deal with unexpected things, it comes as a shock? And it comes and many times it knocks us off focus or it knocks us off kilter to the point we say, where did this come from? But have you ever had an unexplained event to happen in your life that actually blessed you? And I'm talking about one of those occasions where a blessing came your way without any effort on your part. It came just when you needed it the most. And all you could do was lift up your hands, open your mouth, and shout, thank you, Jesus. There are some who have had unexplained reversals of medical conditions where the doctors have said one thing, but later the condition was reversed, leaving the doctors to scratch their head. You were not in line to receive an opportunity that you received, but somehow, some way, you found yourself on the receiving end of a phone call from someone saying they thought about you and that they thought you were worthy of this opportunity out of nowhere. Suddenly, an opportunity appeared right before your eyes. Some of us can admit to the fact that we were involved in an accident that should have been fatal, but survived with only scratches and bruises or no scratches at all. And we can only aim and wonder in amazement, well, not those who are spiritual, but those who would hear and see, amen, the uh, reaction of what has transpired will look at you uh, in amazement and ask the question, what happened? You had an experience with the God of a turnaround. Would you just touch somebody and say, have you had that experience? with the God of a turnaround. The God of a turnaround is when you touch something in the supernatural realm and it changes the way you see things. It changes the way you speak and it changes the way you go about life. It is a supernatural turnaround. And you've got to understand this afternoon that a supernatural turnaround is a divine encounter where God reverses your circumstance. It is where he turns the negative around into a positive and he shifts your thoughts and your life in a totally new direction. So the footprints of God is so big that when he steps in that everything about you has to change. When God steps in on your behalf, everything about you has to shift. When God steps in on your behalf, everything about you has to suddenly change. Understand that when God steps in between me and a situation, that things are changing. Somebody shout, for the better. Why? Because God has the ability to fight your battles. Otherwise, if we're not in the realm of the supernatural, we tend to fight uh, our battles ourselves. We tend to fight our situations ourselves. We tend to fight our circumstances ourselves. But I need somebody to understand today at this one o'clock hour that God is getting ready to come in between you and your situation. And not only that, but he's coming in the midst of the situation and he's going to do it suddenly. Somebody shout suddenly. Somebody shout it one more time, suddenly. Now say it until hell hears you and shout suddenly. And the thing about suddenly is that you can't get ready for it. There's nothing that you can do to make it happen. It just happens. This is why there are times when God puts things together and some things in your life that you don't have the ability to put together yourself. That's when God begins to interrupt your circumstances. That's when God interrupts your situations. That's when God interrupts your problem. And it's called a divine interruption. 
divine interruptions prepare us for divine provisions. What we need to understand is that the things that we hold on to are not as good as things are going to get. Because God interrupts our lives for a reason and for a season. Just turn over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is a season for you to let some things go. Because when we're holding on to things in our lives, we don't have the ability to grasp hold to the things that God has for us. But I want somebody to understand this afternoon that God is getting ready to divinely interrupt your life just to provide you with the thing that you really need. Somebody shout, I receive it. So we understand that God is working in the background of our lives to ensure that we accomplish our life's purpose. Those of you who have told God that you will follow his will to establish his kingdom have been given his assurance that he is going to open up doors that no man can shut and create doorways that don't exist to help you achieve our divine inspired purpose. Oftentimes, because of what it is that we're going through, we don't have the ability to see in the supernatural as to how God is really operating on our behalf. But yet and still, he is there. He is working for us. He's working behind us. He's working in front of us. He's on our left hand and he's on our right. God's unseen hand guides and controls our fears. It controls everything in our our life and it has the ability not only to tear down but at the same time as things are being torn down it has the ability to build things right back up again that's the unseen hand of God it's called God's divine providence it's the will of God working itself out among men it's God seeing to everything that he has prescribed over our lives even though we're going through situations even though we're going through circumstances God's divine providence says uh, that I'm still working things out uh, he said I worked things out at the beginning before you came to your ending uh, he's working things out and he's going to see uh, that the things that he has predestined over your life come to pass the Bible says in Isaiah 46 and 10 uh, it says that I have declared the end from the beginning and from the ancient times not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose in other words what God is saying through the prophet Isaiah is that I will see to it I will see to it that you walk in provision I will see to it that you walk in favor I will see to it that you walk in deliverance I will see to it that you walk in provision why because I will provide and I will see to everything that works in your life for the good because I have called you according to my purpose God's knowledge we must understand this afternoon God's knowledge of the future includes not only everything that actually happens but also everything that could potentially happen what are you saying Pastor Corey not only does God see the ultimate ultimate outcome but God sees the detours that we may take in our lives and even though we may face detours in our lives it does not negate the fact that God has called our ending uh, at the very beginning I wish you would just tell somebody one more good time just keep on going through the process uh, keep on going through the process because uh, when it's all said and done you're going to end up where God uh, has called you to be even for those uh, that have been walking away from the call of God on your life uh, isn't it like God to bring you into a place where you say God I'm not doing this uh, I'm not going back any longer but then somehow God reminds you of his word that he has already predestined over your life and really pretty much tell you that you really have no say in the matter my will in your life shall be accomplished somebody just lift up your hand uh, open up your mouth and shout your will is what I want 
mm, your will is what I want and so we have to understand uh, that it's even in our sickness and in times of trials uh, those of us who have been faithful to God uh, know that he is still operating behind the scene uh, that's why believers never lose hope even when difficulties come because we know that God is working uh, the unfortunate circumstances in a way that will accomplish his purpose for our lives uh, and that's a good thing to understand because uh, when you have that knowledge of knowing that whatever it is that you're facing in your life right now uh, is just a precursor to what it is uh, that God is getting ready to do for me uh, in other words if I'm going through a lot of hell in my life right now uh, I have to believe that somehow some way God is getting ready to balance the scales in my favor and I'm getting ready to experience a whole lot of heaven on this side of the earth. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28 and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. As believers we are assured that God will be there for us in any situation. He tells us that he would never leave us nor would he forsake us but he would be with us even and always up until the ends of the earth somebody shout up that's why I'm so glad I'm so glad to know that he is still with me I got 10 minutes here as we look at our text it focuses on Job and the response of Job to unfortunate circumstances in his life Job is expressing his faith that his situation would be reversed um, and that when he comes out of this current circumstance uh, when he comes out of this, this current trial and situation uh, he makes the declaration that he would come through uh, as pure gold Job is going through something and he is admitting here uh, that he could not get through amen to God he had an ability to speak to God uh, but in this current situation he felt as though uh, he had the inability to get through to God yet um, he clung to the confidence that God was still over um, this crisis in his life um, Job seemed uh, to look at the fleeting instant to understand what he could um, and should do in this present crisis um, you see Job and you must understand was a righteous man a righteous man who faithfully subscribed to the Mosaic law and lived by its principles every day and the Bible describes Job as a righteous man who never broke one law of God but instead he still found himself falling on hard times because of his obedience and his faith faithfulness you have to understand even when you are faithful to God even when you are faithful to the things of God even when you are faithful to the house of God God still has a way of testing your faith he still has a way of testing what you said and testing what it is that you've shown a man in a public setting can you still proclaim it when you're in private downtime I know you shout when you're in here on Sundays and I know you worship when you're in here on Sundays but soon as you walk out of this door and life begin to life at you uh, do you have the ability to still lift up your hands uh, and still proclaim the work of God do you still have the ability uh, to look at what it is that you're going through as if uh, it's just a test of your faith uh, and even furthermore will you still lift up your hands in spite of it all and will you still give God praise while you are yet in the midst of going through what it is that you're going through why because God is testing your faith would you put your hand on yourself and just declare he's testing my faith he's testing your stamina he's testing whether or not you really have the ability to hold
hold on to the very word that God has already spoken and predestined over your life. It is in this text that Job is talking to three friends who sat down with him and he looked to his left and he looking at his right. He's looking up and he's looking down and he tells them that I just can't see God in this situation. But he knew and he was aware of his situation and realized that God had to be involved in it somehow. He said he knows the way that I should take. Or he in essence he was saying that he knows that I'm a good person. But when he finishes testing me he'll find out that I'm going to come out as pure gold. Job's assurance was that God is aware of his faith and that God is aware of his lifestyle and that God is aware of his commitment to the service of God. I'll say it one more time. He understands that God is aware of his faith. He's aware that God is aware of his lifestyle and he's aware that God is aware of his commitment to his faith. I'll say it one more time. God is aware of his faith. God is aware of his lifestyle and God is aware of the commitment to service that you have. Let me break it down. God is aware of your faith. God is aware of your lifestyle and God is aware of the commitment that you have not only uh, not only to his house uh, but your commitment to him uh, and the reason why many of us find ourselves going through same things over and over and over again uh, as I'll say it one more time is because God is aware of your faith uh, or the lack thereof God is aware uh, of the lifestyle that you portray from 12 to 2 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon but he's also aware of what you walk out into uh, at 2.01 p.m. He's aware of the lifestyle, amen, of how we portray, amen, a form of salvation, how we portray uh, a form of godliness but yet we are denying the power thereof. He's aware of our commitment to him is only based on what he gives us uh, and not how faithful he is to us. He's aware church uh, of how we are how we are two two faced. He's aware of how we say one thing but we do another. He's aware that we aren't really committed as much as we say we are. He's aware, he's aware, and he understands that because of his faith, he understands that because of his lifestyle, he understands that because of his commitment to God, that this would underscore the reason why he felt assured that God would turn his situation around. And the reason why many of us find ourselves in helplessness, the reason why many of us find ourselves in hopelessness is because it's not because of the track record of God, uh, but it's because our own track record uh, our own track record fails God I'm not talking about uh, your commitment to the house of God uh, but I'm talking about your commitment to your own salvation uh, I'm talking about how we, we drop the ball every time uh, something bad begins to arise in our life uh, and the thing I love about the story uh, is that God knew where Job was uh, Job was in a fiery place uh, he was was in a furnace but it was a furnace of God's appointment and not a furnace of Job's sin God would use Job's affliction to purify him and to make him a better man the Bible often uses the image of a furnace to describe God's purifying ministry through suffering when God puts his people into the furnace he keeps his his eye on the clock and his hand on the thermostat. Uh, he knows how long and how much you can bear. Uh, we may question why he does it to begin with or why uh, he doesn't turn the heat or even turn it off. Um, uh, but our questions are only evidence of our unbelief um, uh, because many of us should have enough, amen, go through with God um, uh, to realize that if God is bringing me through this, um, uh, then God is going 
going to bring me out of this. I have to realize based on past performances that God has never failed me yet. Even when I've been in places where I didn't like what it was that I was going through, God still found a way to pull me out of what it was that I was going through. He did it. Even when I didn't understand, he did it. Even when I didn't know why, he did it. Even when I could not see him, I heard somebody say, when you can't trace his hand, you can still trust his heart. Because I've been in many situations where I did not have it for myself, yet and still God provided for us. We didn't see him do it, but we know it was God that provided for us the necessities of what it was that we have needed for he said in his word uh, that all that I have needed uh, his hand has already provided uh, it wasn't by happenstance nor was it by circumstance uh, but God knew what it was that we needed before we even came into the place of the need uh, even when we look to our left and we don't see him uh, even when we look to our right as Job says uh, and we feel like he is so far from us we can still lift up our hands and come to a revelation and realize that only God can open up doors that no man can shut even when folks have said that they would not open up the door for us somehow some way it was the favor of God that provided them to us that's the reason why we have the jobs that we have that's the reason why we're driving the cars that we have that's the reason reason why uh, we're living in the houses that we're living in uh, it's because of the favor of God uh, and then we can lift up our hands and say uh, if it had not been for the Lord uh, I got a witness in the back um, uh, if it had not been for the Lord um, uh, who was on our side uh, the enemy of our soul would have swallowed us up a long time ago uh, but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord uh, Christ Jesus I just want you to look over at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, you're still here because you've got victory uh, or tell somebody else tell them say you're still here uh, because you've got victory uh, even when it feels like God isn't around you uh, I can still lift up my hands and understand uh, and say just like Job said uh, though he slay me yet we I trust him uh, simply because I'm going through a God situation uh, and he won't allow the enemy to take me out of here uh, because that's what's happening in this scripture uh, God allowed the enemy to test his servant Job uh, it wasn't the enemy that came up with the idea uh, but it was God that proposed uh, that he would try the servant uh, when he asked the enemy where have you been uh, he had to ask the enemy he had to ask the devil uh, where have you been because uh, although the devil is a spirit he is not God uh, so he doesn't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time uh, so many of us are glorifying the devil saying the devil did this uh, and the devil did that well I'm telling you uh, he ain't working over here and working over there at the same time uh, while he has employed some folks to work on his behalf have uh, it's not all him uh, just tell somebody stop giving them credit stop giving him all that credit uh, so that's why God had to ask him where have you been uh, and he said I've been walking to and fro in the earth uh, seeking whom I may devour uh, and it's at that moment that God asked the devil a question uh, and he says have you tried my servant Job uh, and he said God I, I tried to try him uh, but he he walks too upright he believes you too much uh, and but if you would take the hedge of protection from around him uh, I'm certain that he will curse you and die uh, and he said you're on uh, and he removed the hedge of protection uh, and allowed the devil to try him uh, but it was even in the midst of being tried uh, that Job had such a connection to God uh, even though he lost family uh, even though he lost money uh, 
even though he lost, amen, cattle, amen, that he had, uh, he still said the Lord gives uh, and the Lord takes away. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, he didn't look at his situation and his circumstance uh, and say, why would God allow me to go through this? Uh, but he had a belief with, on the inside of himself uh, that said, if God brought me to this point, uh, then there's something greater that God is getting ready to do in my life. Uh, I wish you would just push your neighbor one good time uh, as I get ready to bring this message to a close uh, and say, oh neighbor, you need to get ready uh, because I've got a feeling uh, that great things are on the way for you. Uh, how is it that I know that great things are on the way? Uh, when I consider what it is that you're going through right now, uh, it's not your conclusion, uh, nor shall it be your demise. Uh, but if you're going to hold on a little while longer, uh, God is getting ready to come in uh, and set your life straight. Um, uh, that's why David said, uh, or Isaiah said rather, uh, that they that wait uh, upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up uh, on wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run uh, and never get weary. Uh, they shall walk uh, and they shall not faint. Uh, and then I heard David say uh, that I will lift up mine eyes uh, unto the hills heals uh, from whence cometh my help uh, knowing all of my help uh, comes from the Lord uh, the Lord who made heaven uh, and made the earth uh, I've come to tell somebody uh, as I get ready to take my seat uh, that there's getting ready to come uh, better days on your behalf uh, this is the reason why uh, you had to go through suffering uh, this is the reason why uh, you had to go through difficulty. Uh, this is the reason why uh, you had to go through the circumstance uh, that you had to go through uh, feeling like nobody else uh, would understand. Uh, you tried to talk to friends, uh, but friends didn't understand. Uh, tried to talk to family, uh, but family didn't understand. Uh, but the Bible offers us uh, several reasons why uh, for us to understand. Uh, he said that the testing uh, uh, it strengthens our character. Uh, that's why James said uh, for us to count it all joy uh, when you fall into uh, diverse temptation, uh, knowing this thing, uh, that the trying of your faith uh, worketh patience. Uh, but please let patience uh, have her perfect work in you, uh, that ye may be perfect uh, and endure, uh, wanting for nothing. Uh, one thing that I've learned uh, is that some painful situations uh, have a way uh, of producing character uh, the same way uh, exercise builds muscle uh, if you want to learn how uh, to build your character uh, build your character in God uh, you've got to learn how uh, to endure a hardship uh, like a good soldier uh, realizing uh, that if you don't go through it now God may take it away from you but at some point in your life you're just gonna go through that same trial all over again but I'm so glad I said I'm so glad that the Bible declares that regardless to where I am now regardless to what I don't know he has declared to us that I know the thoughts that I I think toward you, uh, saith the Lord, uh, thoughts of peace uh, and not of evil, uh, to give you an expected end. Uh, I may not know uh, what tomorrow's gonna bring, uh, but the one thing I know uh, is that based on uh, what God has done uh, in the past, uh, I can say uh, beyond a surety uh, that God uh, is working. Uh, something out uh, for me uh, in my right now uh, I dare you uh, to lift up your hand uh, and open uh, up your mouth uh, and say when I come out of this uh, 
this time uh, I'm gonna come out uh, as pure gold uh, I may not like it uh, it may not feel good uh, but I've got to believe uh, that he's given me uh, the power uh, of life and death uh, and it's in my mouth uh, so I can declare uh, I ain't got to wait uh, for no prophet uh, to come and slather me down uh, with oil uh, but I can declare uh, because that same power uh, that he gave Jesus uh, he said greater uh, is on the inside of you uh, so I I can declare that when I come out of this, I shall, I shall come out as pure gold. Is there anybody in this house that can declare that I am in a hard situation? But right now, I'm declaring that when I come out of this, I'm coming out. Uh, with my hands up uh, when I uh, come out of this uh, I'm coming out uh, with a praise uh, when I when I come out, when I come out of this, I'm coming out with a greater victory. When I, I, when I, when I come out, when I come out of this, I'm coming out with a greater peace. Cause I heard, I heard, I heard the Bible say that He'll leave me in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on him touch your head and say I'm so glad that I did not lose I didn't lose my mind cause the last trial came to wipe me out it didn't come to kill me but it came to cause me to lose my natural mind but I'm so glad that I I heard, uh, I heard the word say, uh, let this mind uh, be in you. Uh, that was also uh, in Christ Jesus, uh, the same mind uh, that had Jesus uh, in the garden uh, of Gethsemane, uh, asking God, uh, how much longer uh, do I have to strive uh, in the assignment uh, that you have over my life? Uh, anybody ever been there uh, where you had to ask God? How much longer do I have to strive with the purpose that you have over my life? How much longer do I have to strive with the assignment that you called over my life? I thought it was enough just to lift up my hand. I thought it was enough just to say yes, Lord. But I did not realize that my yes was going to cost me. My yes was going to cost me family. My yes was going to cost me friends. My yes was going to cost me some lonely time. My yes would cause me to feel abandoned. My yes would cause me to feel like I want to walk away. My yes would cause me to feel like I'm going to throw in the towel. My yes uh, will cause me uh, to want to curse everybody out. Uh, my yes uh, will want to cause me uh, to give into depression. Uh, my yes uh, will cause me uh, to want to go overboard. Uh, my yes uh, will cause me uh, to want to give it up. Uh, but I hate uh, I heard Jesus say, nevertheless, 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 not my will, but thy, thy will, thy will be done. Is there anybody in this house that can declare, I may not like it, but my prayer is no longer, take my will out of the equation, and I change my will for your will I change my way for your way if it's not like you take it out of me cause I wanna walk in your perfect will I'm tired of doing it on my own so I will say like the psalmist said create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit I'm not in the right 
right frame of mind. I'm not in the right emotions. So create all over again in me to start over. Create in me to do it all over again. What I tried to do did not work. So I'm asking, Lord, I release my will for your will. I release my way for your way and say, Lord, 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 I give you permission to do it all over again because I'm tired of going through the same circle. I'm tired of going through this same trial when I feel like I'm out of it. Something pulls me right back in. I thought it was, thought it was the devil, but now I realize that you're calling me to a higher place, but I've got to exercise my faith on this level, but I am ready to go higher. Is there anybody in this house that can declare that I I'm ready to go higher, higher, higher. I'm ready to go into a place that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered to the heart of man to break things that God is getting ready to do. I dare you, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm here to prophesy. It's time for you to come out of your low place. It's time for you to come out of the sunken place. It's time for you to come out of the depressed place. It's time for you to come out of confusion. It's time for you to come out of the wilderness. Yes, grab that neighbor. Pull on them and say, I'm telling you, it's coming out season. It's coming out season. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy. It's not worthy. It's not worthy. It's not worthy. It don't even compare to what it is that God is getting ready to do. Somebody lift your hands. Open up your mouth. And shout uh, when I come out, uh, when I come out, uh, when, 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 uh, when I come out, uh, I'm coming out changed, uh, I'm coming out uh, healed, uh, I'm coming out uh, whole, uh, somebody uh, open your mouth uh, and pray. Praise him like you're out. 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 Lift your hands. Open your mouth and shout like you know. Praise like you know. Shout like you know. Praise like you know. Let everything that has breath praise him. Praise him. a good place to praise them. Come on, I said that's a good place to praise them.
It's not that I'm not dealing with what I'm going through, N nor am I foolish to act as if what I'm going through isn't affecting me. We've been there and we've done that. But McMillan, I made up in my mind that I've seen too many victories to allow defeat to have the final say. I've seen too many victories to allow defeat to have the final say. You may not understand what it is I'm dealing with but my praise testifies to the saving grace that says it won't be long from now. You see me praising in it, but before it's all said and done, my praise is going to be because I'm out of it. I dare somebody take the next 60 seconds and praise them like you know you're out of it. Sister Sharon, everybody clap your hands. providing victory I said your praise is providing victory I said your praise is providing victory everybody clap your hands
And just tell them better just hit your house. Tell them say better just hit your house. Tell them say better just hit your house. Oh, better just hit your. It just hit your house. I said it just hit your house. Just hit my house. No more looking through the eyes of our circumstances, but looking through the eyes of faith. No more looking through the eyes of our situation, but looking through the eyes of faith. Realizing that God specializes in repeat performances. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Realizing that God specializes in encore. You ever been to a, a Broadway show and the end of the show was so good? that the people clap and they ask for specifically they say encore encore I guarantee you if you can find yourself in a clapping frenzy and just look up to heaven and just say encore I'm here to tell you that he's gonna do it again He's gonna do it. Do it again. Do it again. He's gonna do an encore. Do it again. 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 Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. He's getting ready, he's getting ready, he's getting ready, he's getting ready. I have not seen, it's not her, I've not seen, it's not her, I've not seen, it's not her, I've not seen, it's not her. He's gonna do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. In the shape that you're in, the potter wants to put you back together. Oh, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in, the potter wants. Come on, church, lift it up. Oh, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in, the potter wants. Oh, you don't have to stay in the shade Oh, the potter wants to put you back together One more time Oh, you don't have to stay in the shade that you're in The potter wants to put you back together One more time Oh, you don't have to stay in the shade that you're in The potter wants to put you Come on church, lift it up Hey, it's getting ready to happen It's getting ready to happen oh. Lift it up church 
Somebody's hand. We gotta go. I like that. Y'all be here. Y'all check it. Just tell them, let me be the first to welcome you into a season, a place, and a time called better. I said, 
a season, a place, and a time. Hope. Call better, better, better. Hey, what kind of? You had enough crying this year. Get ready. The next 48 days are gonna make up for all the hell that you had to cry over. He said, it's getting ready to be bad. I call you out. I said, I call you out. I said, I call you out. I said, I call you out. Oh, Rada. 
emotions. But I've been called up. And I've been called out. My emotions won't win this time. Woo. I said my emotions won't win this time. Time we gotta go. Oh, you don't have to stay. Well, I don't want. Oh, you don't have to stay. The part of one. One more time. Oh, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Come on, clap your hands and tell God yes. Oh. One more time, yes, Lord. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Ha, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, clap your hands real fast and tell God yes. Please take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all of our days. Because we came to church and got a revelation that where we are is not where we are to be always. But somebody just wave your right hand and say, I got a revelation. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. I got a revelation. Means the light was turned on in a dark place. That the light was turned on in a dark place couldn't see my way but he gave me a revelation didn't know where I was going but he gave me a revelation didn't understand what was happening but he gave me a revelation that said it won't be like this won't be like this always but when I come out when I come out when I come out this time it'll be the last time that I ever have to go through it again I say it'll be the last time that I ever have to face it again it'll be the last time that I ever have to cry about it again it'll be the last time the enemy you see before you'll see them again no more forever no more forever, no more forever, no more forever, no more forever, no more, no more, no more, no more, no. I've got a revelation. I've got a revelation where I came in in a dark place. He came in and turned the light on. Hiya! Ho! Habasha! I 
I'm gonna give them 30 seconds. We gotta move. But he turned the light on. He turned the light on. Jesus came and turned the light on in my situation doesn't mean I don't need to feel what I'm going through but I go through what I go through with the understanding that I'm just passing by I'm just going through but when I come out this time it'll be the last time that I have to suffer the way I suffer It'll be the last time. Tell somebody you see me in my now, but get ready to see me in my next. Aya! Oba! Shataba! Hiko! Rataba! Aya! You see me in my now, but get ready, because the next time you see me, I'm going to be in my next. always I said it won't be like this always church I said it won't be like this always quickly we didn't do our tithing offering yet I need you to grab your tithe and your offering Grab your tithe and your offering. I need six people. Who did I say? I need six people to do this quickly. Respond to the presence of God that's here. And respond to the revelation that you just received. I'm not going to make you get up. Do this out of the consciousness of your heart. And in response to the revelation. I need six people to join me. And sowing a $122 seed offering. And I need everybody. Who did I say? I need everybody to grab a seed offering of $26. Coco, that's you too. So she won't play the tambourine while I'm talking. I need six people. And don't delay. Don't question. Be obedient. Grab a $122 seat offering. Don't come to me and say, Pastor, I got bills. God is greater than your bills. Y'all ain't said nothing. Like, Thank you. God is greater than your bills. God has the way to wipe those things out because you're being obedient to him. I looked at my UI bill, which is outrageous. And they had a nerve to put me on a matching payment plan one time. And this was a few months ago, y'all. And when I looked and I said, okay, put me on the matching payment plan, I agreed to it. They ended up going backwards and taking all the small payments I made and matching for the last, I don't know, it was a part of pandemic relief or whatever. But they took all the payments that I had made the last year 
and applied it as if it was part of the matching payment program. And when I looked at my bill, my bill was less than half of what it was that I originally owed them. And I said, oh, I can pay this now. But it comes in obedience. Y'all remember a few months ago, I called for, the, for those in the church to sow a $500 seed offering. I sold a $500 seed offering out of my need. Hear me. I sold it out of my need. And I said, God, if you require this of me, that means you got something better for me. And within that week, God had made a way for my household. I'm here to tell you, being obedient to God works. I ain't got nobody to say no. I said, being obedient to God works. So I need how many people did I say to sow 122? Six people. Yes, thank you. Six people to sow 100. Oh, no, you ain't got to tell me you did it. This is out of the consciousness of your heart. But I need everybody else to put a seed offering of $26 in your hand. Amen, Coco. And we're still sowing our tithe and our offering. I want you to stand. Say, Pastor, I don't have 122, nor do I have 26. Those of you online, I need you to sow. Say, Pastor, I don't have 122. I don't even have the 26. What have I been teaching you? You still sow. And you sow whatever you're sowing as if it is the 122 or it is the 26. And watch God. Somebody say, turn it around. Overseer gave the testimony that she believed God for years that she was going to be able to sow a thousand dollar seed offering. And somehow, some way at a minute of time, and I might be making, making the story a little tweaking it, but I know she said something with taxes. And they ended up getting back a lump sum of money to where she was able to come into the church and sow the seed that she's been requesting God would allow her to sow. He said, try me now in this. That I would open up the windows of heaven to do what? To pour you out a blessing. That when you look, you won't even have room enough to receive. But you can only receive if you learn how to give. Put a seed in your hand. Stand to your feet. Put a seed in your hand. You might be sowing cash app. You might be sowing. What do we have? Cash app. Or you're texting the word up to empowerment 73256. Or you're going on our website, empowermentcct.org, and you're clicking the online giving tab. Whatever you do, don't be caught not sowing in this atmosphere. Tell somebody you got to sow. You can't afford not to sow. Where's my card? You have it still? I've already sown. 122. You did it, right? Take your seed and put it in your right hand. We teach here that the right hand represents what? Say it again because some of ECC is missing. The right hand represents what? While God fights for us with his left hand, he provides for us with his right. The scripture declares that in the presence of the Lord is what? The fullness. Somebody say, I receive his fullness. It's the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So as soon as we put the seed in our right hand and we release it, it gives God the opportunity to sow it right back into our lives. Somebody say, I receive it. So I need you to make this declaration with us as if you know something is getting ready to happen this week. Somebody say, I, I present my tithe, my offerings, and my love gifts. This is my first, and this is my best. As we give today's offerings, we believe that we receive jobs, raises and bonuses, benefit sales and commissions, settlements and estates, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail. I received multiple testimonies this week of members saying that they receive checks in the mail. You can't make this declaration and not believe that it's getting ready to happen. Say it one more time. Checks in the mail, lost money found, bills paid off, mortgages paid off, Car loans paid off, student loans paid off, bills paid off, debts demolished. Say this, I am living debt free. Royalties received, all of my needs are met. We receive 
the grace to walk in overflow and fulfillment. We expect more out of heaven than ever before. I receive my harvest now by faith in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. Listen, even if you're sowing electronically, I need you to come and touch this bucket. Put your phone on it. Put your money in it. Put your checks in it. Whatever it is you're sowing, come and touch this bucket. The Lord bless you real good. We're going to dismiss you in just a moment. We just want to, number one, tell Empowerment, thank you for being with us this past Friday night. Amen. We have certainly been experiencing revival. Amen. Wherever we go. Amen. And then tell somebody it's not about to stop. It is not about to stop. Amen. And we invite you to come along on the trip. Amen. Some of you may be looking for a church home. You may be looking to be saved. You may be looking to grow spiritually. Amen. Just tell somebody this is a good house. This is a good house to be developed. Hey, this is a good house to continue to grow in the things of God. Amen. If that will be you, amen. The doors of the church are open. Amen. We open it up for you. Amen. And you say, Pastor, I need a pastor. Amen. I'll tell you it this way. I want to be your pastor. Amen. And we want to be your church. Amen. Amen, Sister Keisha. Amen. We love y'all. I'm just, I just be messing with folks. Um, we love y'all. Amen. This past Friday, we, where were we? Encouraging Word Church. Amen. And God certainly had his way there. Amen. They were still talking about it to me yesterday, inboxing. Amen. Of the confirmation. Amen. That the Lord spoke. And I don't talk to many people, let alone to other pastors, to hear, uh, but to hear the good report. Amen. And that we came and we were a blessing. Amen. The last thing you want to go is to go to somebody else's house and be a hindrance. But we went and we were a blessing to them in their fifth year church anniversary. Amen. Amen. We want to remind you that are watching those that are here. Amen. Our pastor Kentrell. Amen. He just had his CD released. He just had his album released. Amen. About two or three weeks ago. And it's, it is steady climbing the chart, charts. Amen. This week, we, we did an a, a album release in Canada. But this week, somebody say this week. We're doing an album release this week. Amen. And it's called Part 2. Amen. And it will be held at the Cathedral of Faith, 2319 Fairfield Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's going to be this Thursday night. This Thursday night at... 7.30, 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Listen, the tickets are only $10, amen, empowerment. Those here, those watching, you need to be there to support this man of God. He is one of our ministry gifts, amen, not only to this church but to the nations, and we want to be there to support, amen. Alongside him will be our friend, Brother Jeremy McCain and Sister Kimberly Joy. Listen, it's going to be a phenomenal night, amen. You can get your tickets by going to KentrellReaganMusic.com, amen. You can secure your ticket and your place, and then be there on time. Be there on time. It's a Thursday night. Some of y'all got to go to work Thursday, Friday morning. Some of y'all got to go to work Thursday night. Be there on time. I mean, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Journey, I feel like I'm forgetting another announcement. What is it? The bus trip. 
the bus trip. We'll be going to Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey on December the 4th. Amen. Dece December the 4th, we have the opportunity to go minister at Ark City Church in Newark, New Jersey. Listen, the bus is almost filled. All we're doing is taking your names right now. The bus is almost filled. I think we have maybe 10 more seats left. We have about 10 seats left. If you want to go, please see Deacon Coleman. If he's out of the spirit, please see Deacon Coleman. Amen. He got his today. Amen. Look at somebody say, what's wrong with you? Hey, he got, he got, he got, did you get what you needed, son? He, he got what he needed. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen, why else you come to church? Listen, I'm, I make up my mind. I'm not leaving here the same way I came. If I got to roll on the floor, amen, knock over a Leslie, do what I got to do. Amen. To get what I need from God. Amen. Elder, uh, Elder Lewis was back there laid out on the floor. She was supposed to be ushering. I don't know what happened back there. She ushered herself down to the ground. Amen. Did it gracefully. Amen. She, she, Tasha Cobb said gracefully Brooklyn. She gracefully fallen. Amen. She fell gracefully. We thank God. Amen. But these, December 4th, December 4th, we are going to Newark, New Jersey. Amen. I need the church. Before we make this announcement publicly, I need, don't, don't come to us on the 4th and say, oh, I wanted to go. Amen. You know how y'all do. Y'all last minute sallies. Amen. See, say it again. We're going to see Deacon Coleman. Amen. We're going to see Deacon Coleman just to give us his, their, your names and the names of those that you know will be uh, accompanying him. Amen. This bus is comfortable. It has plugs for your cell phone. It has Wi-Fi. has, uh, you know, the DVD thingy for us to watch DVD, all of that stuff. Amen. And you can put your seats back. It's comfortable. Amen. So if you want to go on for a drive and not have to drive on a Sunday, amen, see Deacon Coleman. Amen. And if we have to expand, amen, we'll look into getting a larger bus. But see him. We only have 10 seats left. And we want to make sure ECC is on the bus before we invite everybody else. Amen. Amen. And the money is due on the 27th which is the last Sunday of the month. We're asking for $36 for the bus, and then we're asking those that are attending, when you come with us, that you at least have a $20 seat offering. Amen? Amen. And we're leaving here at 1.30. We're going to have a special 10.30 service, and then we're going to allow you time to go home, change, amen, and get gentrified, if you will. Amen for, <laughs> amen for our trip. Amen. And then we're going to come back. We're going to park right here on the, in the lot. Amen. And we're going to depart from ECC at 1.30. And we should be back by around 9.30. Amen. We will see what happens with that. Amen. But we plan on being back by 9.30. Amen. That evening. Um, Pastor Stacy, Amen. Is getting ready to prepare. Amen. I think we, we said gift cards, right? We're doing, amen, five $100 gift cards for five families. Amen. We already have one gift card that has been sponsored. Amen. If you want to sponsor a gift card or want to sponsor a gift toward it, amen, the church is doing gift cards for families. So if you know anyone that is in need, amen, for the holiday season and we realize everybody don't eat turkey, everybody don't eat ham. So we want we don't want to give folks something that they don't eat. Amen. So we'll give them a gift card to ShopRite. Amen. They can go to the store and get what they need. Amen. Amen. So if you know somebody that is in need, please, please, my brothers, my sisters, please see Pastor Stacy today so that we can prepare what we need to prepare. Amen. Sister McMillan is going to come at this time. She has a special announcement. Amen. Let's clap your hands and receive her. Listen, I told you, I don't come to ECC if you don't want to go to work. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, next week is Lady Sherry's birthday. So, oh. Next Sunday, we will be honoring her. Um, next Sunday, we will be honoring her. Pastor is asking everyone if you could bring um, a birthday card, a piece of flower, a piece of candy, something, just to show your appreciation to our very own Lady Sherry. Um, everyone that knows Lady Sherry knows that she loves to dress, so come in your Sunday's best and come ready to have church. Amen. See what I can find in my closet. Amen to appease our First Lady. Amen. Did not God move today? Amen. God is amazing. And every Sunday that we've been here has been, amen, a time and an experience. And I'm so glad to have so many of you come out and join us on a Sunday. Amen. A Sunday afternoon at that. Amen. I thank God. Just tell somebody, I thank God for you. Amen. Tell, oh, you ain't said it like you mean it. Look at him and say, I thank God for you. Amen. I believe that's all of our announcements. Amen. At this time, I think we figured out the heat. Amen. Amen, Sister Brittany. I think we figured it out. Amen. So we will be here this Wednesday. 
amen, with WNPR, amen, and we'll be out in time for rehearsals, amen, for the choir and for the praise team, and, and there is choir rehearsal this week, amen, we're asking everyone that's a part of the choir, whether you're here or you're watching online, please be here this Wednesday, amen, at 7 p.m. for prayer, and we, and we end on time, because we will be singing here, and we will be singing in Jersey, amen, amen, we got a choir, we do, we do have a choir, amen, they just ain't singing in a minute. Amen. But we do have a choir. So we're asking everybody to come out. Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Amen. Tomorrow night at six. What time do we say, Carla? Six o'clock. Amen. We're doing, amen, my, my office in Bridgeport, the Council of Churches of Greater Bridgeport, amen, is hosting a parenting journey class, amen, for any of our new parents, amen, that are looking just for insight, and any, any of our older parents that are looking for insight and ways to help parent, amen, in this, amen, in today's universe, amen. It's, it's difficult, but you got some folks that can help, amen. So if you're a mother, a father, a grandparent, amen, an uncle or an aunt, amen, and you want to participate, Amen. It will be here tomorrow in the fellowship hall at 6 p.m. There will be free food, free child care if you have to bring your children. Amen. And it's free of charge and it will be an hour, maybe an hour and a half at the most. Amen. Amen. But come out or tell somebody about it. I will try to post a flyer. Amen. This afternoon. Amen. So if we can get anybody that can come out, they can register. So at least we know who's coming out. But that will be here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Amen. Amen. Can you just do me a favor? Tell somebody on your left and on your right. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to the family right here in the row. I appreciate you all for being here and being a part of today's service. Amen. I pray that you all were blessed. Amen. And we look forward. Tell somebody, say, we want to see you again. Amen. Today, we want to see you again. Amen. Since Keish, anyway. Amen. We want to see y'all again. Amen. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Amen. As we get ready to leave this place, but never the presence of God. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have. We decree and we declare from this time forth that we shall never be the same in Jesus' name. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask for you to go with us as we go with you. Love us, we will be loved. Keep us, we will be kept. Deliver us, and we shall be delivered. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Hug somebody before.